the public works minister Maputo Vlad Nimpan suffers massive stroke at the JFK Medical Center. The Liberian Union for Community Forestry Development threatens nationwide protest. President George Weah dismisses and fills Director General Musoka Fala with immediate people. According to an executive mansion release, President George Weah's decision to dismiss Dr. Fala is in agreement with findings and recommendations of the Special Investigative Committee. President Weah said he remains committed to implementing the recommendations contained in the report and has ordered the publication of the committee's full report. The Liberian leader either constituted the investigative committee to probe whether there were systematic breaches in reporting procedure of COVID-19 results and recommend actions to be taken in order to remedy the situation. Dr. Fala was either suspended for time indefinite in the wake of the allegations. The committee headed by Dr. Lena Bridge submitted a report on August 14 after it was given 72 hours to investigate the controversies at the Public Health Institute. Meanwhile, Dr. Patrick Bayan, Deputy Director General for Administration at Enfield, will continue to act as Director General pending follow action. Anthony Kukui, KMTV News. Monrovia. Anthony Koki with that report. The officers of the Monrovia City Corporation, in connection with the flocking of journalist Bill Dix of Vision TV, are currently undergoing an investigation at the Library National Police. Patrol men Aaron S. Kennedy and Willie D. Flumble allegedly brutalized and injured journalist Dix in front of the residence of Mayor Jefferson Koji. The city government admitted that the two officers went beyond their scope of operation, which contravenes the city police professional code of ethics. The Liberian National Police has been requested to launch a speedy investigation, and the officers forwarded should, be, should bear the full weight of the law if found guilty following the outcome of the investigation. Following a series of protests over the reopening of institutions of higher learning, the National Commission on Higher Education says all is now set for the resumption of academic activities at various universities and colleges. But what are the processes and activities leading to the reopening of tertiary institutions across the country? KNTV's Emmanuel Datomo reports. Following months of isolation from classrooms, University students are expected to resume their regular classroom learning beginning October 1, this time with strict compliance to existing health protocols. This follows months of consultation with the incident management system at the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education. As of October 1st, all higher learning institutions in Liberia will be required to open provided they have met up with uh, the, all the health protocol on the direct campuses uh, that will be reflected on the report from the direct health officers in the direct counties. The decision to reopen universities, according to Director Dan, was not taken due to pressure from protesting university students. He noted that schools that would not be in compliance with county health officers for the inspection of facilities will not be allowed to reopen to the public. Based on that resolution, we submitted it to the Ministry of Health. Discussion was held with the Ministry of Health. Uh, as the Chief Medical Officer to work along with the Commission of Higher Education to derive at some possible time that we will open school and looking at some of the things that the institution had to care of. So that's why uh, we came up with that announcement. Uh, so it was not pressure from any group of students uh, to have institutions.
He describes as fake and appalling the decision of some higher learning institutions to operate without lessons and accreditation from the National Commission of Higher Education, warning that the Commission will not hesitate to close and drag operators of those institutions to court. Those who are bent on going and setting up on one room somewhere and telling people that they are running higher institutions and then offering degrees like baccalaureate, associate degrees, some of them even go, they offer master degrees, they have to desist. They have to desist. Because when you are found out, you will surely be disgraced and you, your institution will be closed down and you might end up going to jail. The National Commission on Higher Education was established by an act of legislature in 1989. The commission is to formulate broad policy guidelines for the establishment of institutions of higher education in Liberia. Emmanuel Tato Mankali, KMTV News, Pinsville. The agricultural sector in Liberia has over the years been challenged by low productivity due to inadequate support. But some local farmers in Nima County keep striving to make production as one of their priorities. KMTV's Angela Noah report. The fully produced farm, which covers about 15 acres of land in Nebai Town, Nebai County, has been beautifully designed with one of the high-cost vegetables, which when focused on would take the country's agricultural industry to the next benefiting level. Despite rice and cassava being the stable food crops in Liberia, some local farmers have seen cabbage and bitter ball as some of the major food crops to be produced. The farmers have begun harvesting the farm buried with cabbage and selling the produce to local vegetable vendors as their services are limited to Liberians for now. Rural farmers are more passionate about vegetable production but lack funding to maintain their farms and therefore want the government of Liberia to invest more into the country's agricultural sector. I'm a trader, but I support farm. But it's difficulty. We're to support the farm, the time the time is will get a material to the farmer, it can be on the farm export. Where they really want to do something, but no help, who get it? No. Who the no. women no. said it vegetable? So, we face a problem. I'm a seven year, I get my own farm all the way, can't please. But you're not ready here. Now, my tomato, why are they playing for me? Tomato coming, it will be in Ganto today, about far Canton. I suppose on the people to do it for me. But now, we are said need help. For the people to help us with the women setting, the with the vegetables set up, them will help us. They see a thing coming from our country, 50 are US for one cup of sea. And when you put the sea in and on the North Street, when I come up, that probably, they first saw that 10,000. They first saw that 10,000 for one bear. You get the things that are very expensive. So the need for the government to help us. For the people sitting in the hotel, because they know it's answer the problem, just to help us with the power or to be able to go forward. So what message you got for Ministry of Agriculture that's supposed to be producing things like this? Only thing I had to tell you is, let it help her. To help her with sea, fair soil, everything. When I do get taken, no problem. The farm does not only benefit local vegetable vendors, but also serves as a source of income for some students to obtain education and an opportunity for parents who lack the funding to send their children to the World Leadership Academy, a local school owned and operated by the farm owner. Now one of the brilliant ideas that you know the community benefiting on, because he said even don't think the way the school building looking at this, some people will be worrying, hey, this school I want for my, my children or my child to come here, but I don't have the hand. You should not think that way. If you want for your child or your children to come here, you the parent, you got to come and work on the farm. The money you will be working for, you will be able to pay your, school, your, your child's school fee. And as a student, if you don't have, you, you yourself can come and work for your school fee. This is what, how we're doing it. 
This practice, which existed many years ago, is still the secret behind some successful stories today, as these young men work very hard on the farms in order to obtain education. This is called the battle system. Angelic Noir came TV News, neighbor town, Nimba County. Angelic Noir with that report. Well, folks, if you just joining us, this is a reminder that you are watching news today only on KMTV with me, Zabshin. Still, still coming up. Liberia's Public Works Minister Mangutu Vlad Yepan suffers massive stroke at the GFK Medical Center. National Union of Community Forestry Development Committee threatens nationwide. We'll see that more for you right after this break. <music> The remains of former Bomi County Senator Lahala Sanan was early this morning taken to the Bomi County for funeral and burial activities. Schools of supporters, family members, and traditional marks dancers lined up in queue along the road to welcome his remains and paid respect to the former lawmaker. Senator Lahala Sanan died in August following a period of illness. Representative Edwin Snow of Bomi County and other officials escorted his remains to the county. The National Union of Community Forestry Development Committee has threatened to carry out a nationwide massive and peaceful protest if the affected percent land render fees as stated by law is not provided by the government of Liberia. As they presented the petition to the 54th legislature, the aggrieved committee said that the continual de denial of their benefit is a humiliation against their livelihood. Here is a report. The National Union of Community Forestry Development Committee told the 54th legislature that as of 2017, affected communities has not received the 30% land rental fees as stated by law. Of the 27.7 million reported, reportedly collected by law, 8.3 million. 30% should have been transferred to the National Benefit Sharing Trust Board to be disbursed to community. However, only 2.6 million has been transferred to date. Since the inception of the CDC-led government into office, the committee said all efforts to receive affected communities' land rental fees as stated by law has been to no avail. It is regrettable to inform you that we have endeavored all this effort to ensure affected communities receive their just benefit. Nothing is being done by the present government, which you are part of. According to the head of Secretariat, previous administration of President L. Johnson Salif made provision of the 30% land rental fees, which enabled them to undertake community projects. The government of former President L. Johnson Salif provided affected community two million $622 as part of land rental fees arrears the government of Liberia collected uh, for loggers since 2009. This amount paid to affected communities and able them to initiate and implement over 40 community projects including construction of schools, clinics, vocational training centers, road rehabilitation, guest houses, community town halls among others. As they petition the Liberia's 54th legislature, the National Union of Community Forestry Development Committee has threatened to carry on a nationwide massive and peaceful protest if nothing is done in as soon as possible time. The National Union of Community Forestry Development Committee alongside with all 230 members and officials of the 23 Community Forestry Development Committee within the 11 counties and all members of the affected communities within these 11 counties we organized a peaceful mass protest calling for hot to all logging activities taking place in the affected communities. Montserrat County District 4 representative and chair on claims and petition, Rostalin Swakoko Dennis, acknowledged the petition. I acknowledge the receipt of your petition and I can assure you that the committee we are going to do due diligence with your petition and we will send your communication to the full plenary of which decision will be taken. 
as the national budget remains subject to passage at the legislature, the National Union of Community Forestry Development Committee is hopeful for its budgetary allotment. Reporting from Capital Building, I'm Zach Dottiama Shemen for KMTV News. Liberia's Public Works Minister, Mambutu Vlad Yempan, is said to be on life saving support at the JF Kennedy Medical Center. Minister Yempan reportedly fell off during a lunch meeting with all government officials and suffered a massive stroke. Report emerged Thursday night that Minister Yempan was in coma. Reports have also been circulating social media that the Public Works Minister is dead, but family members have denied maintaining that the Public Works Minister is still alive. In the absence of football activities, the Liberian Football Association has for the past weeks embarked on one of its major projects, that's projects to give the Antoine Todman Stadium a first leave. The project is being implemented as a resumption date for the new LFA League season draws closer. Anthony Kokwe reports. It's been over five months since football was last played at the Antoine Todman Stadium. The outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic led to the suspension of all football activities across the country. The decision also led to the cancellation of the 2019 LFA League season, which had already gone to halfway mark. As the National League is set to resume in October, the Liberia Football Association is racing against time to refurbish the Antoinette Tottenham Stadium before things return to normal. The ongoing re-roofing project of the stadium is one of four projects approved by FIFA and is being implemented by the Football Association. Uh, the other three include the Tucson Field project, the SKD practice page, and the um, George Weah Technical Center. Those are the four projects uh, approved by FIFA and being implemented by the Liberia Football Association. According to the budget approved at the June 12th Ordinary Congress, uh, the cost of the re-roofing is put at 55,000 US dollars and is being implemented by the Genoa Engineering, Architectural and Water Exploration Incorporated as a group that is doing the um, the re-roofing, I don't want to call it renovation, of the leg, you can call it renovation, but I will call it re-roofing of the ATA that includes the VIP box and around the VIP and also an extension to where we have the our offices, including the, where we have this. This is one of many projects that are likely to be implemented at ATS as the installation of lights for night games, among others, are expected to follow. We are at the sitting stage where we're dealing with the uh, the re-roofing, um, you may have listened to one or two interviews by the president where he talked about um, night games, you know, the installation of lighting facility, changing of the school poles, um, you know, seats, uh, what we call bucket seats. Those are, you know, projects that will come in phases. Once we're done with the re-roofing, we send the um, reports, uh, pictures, you know, videos to FIFA then we can make a request for new, um, you know, development of the ATS. But firstly, we must be done with this. With the decline in new COVID-19 infections in Liberia, football and health authorities are now holding discussions relative to the resumption of sports, where players will once again return to the pitch as spectators will cheer from the stands of a refurbished Antoinette Tottenham Stadium. Anthony Kukwe, KMTV News, Monroeville. And still with sports, the Liberia Football Association on Tuesday distributed office equipment to the 18 women's football clubs in both upper and lower leagues. The distribution ceremony was held at the VP stands of the Antoine Tottenham Stadium. Anthony Kukwe has a report. Uh, on behalf of the Women's Football Committee, the distribution of the items is part of the LFA's plan to build the capacity of women's football club secretaries. It took to the amount of US 15,000. Of the US 500,000 for women's football development was used to purchase the pieces of equipment. The US 500,000 is a universal solidarity grant allocated by FIFA to members' associations specifically for women's football development. FIFA and CAF have both made commitments to support members' associations to accelerate the growth of women's football at all levels across Africa and the world. The Liberal Football Association is therefore making use of the opportunity to invest more into women's football to make it the number one priority sports for women and girls in Liberia. Today, in addition to that support, we are benefiting from the Women's Football Development Funds 
and we've utilized portion of the fund as approved by FIFA to provide computers and printers to our women football team in the level of the upper and lower leagues. We've also used uh, funding from the Equipment Solidarity Funds to provide 20 footballs to each of the women's football upper league and 10 footballs each to the lower league. Again, we are going to support more uh, women. We're going to invest more in women's football. Uh, we want to make women's football number one priority sports for women in the country and we continue to do that. The money for football, uh, whenever received by the Football Association, is going to be used for football. All money from FIFA is going to be used for your football programs. To make women football the number one priority sports for women and girls in Liberia, the Football Association is not only allocating funds to clubs, but has also allocated funds for women football competitions in over 700 high schools across the country. I'm Fanny Kukwe, KMTV News, Monroeville. Well, folks, with that development from Anthony Kokwe, on a note, that's how we close up the presentation of news today on the KMT. For here are stories that made the headlines. Liberia's public works minister of Mambudu Vlad Nyeban suffers massive stroke at the JFK Medical Center. The National Union of Community Forestry Development Committee threatens nationwide protest. President George Weir dismisses Enfield's Director General Mosoko Fala with immediate effect. Thanks for your viewing pleasure. I'm Zach Sherman on behalf of the entire team.